everybody. Father Royce Gregerson. Uh, guess what? This weekend, of course, is Palm Sunday. That's tomorrow. And obviously, our Palm Sunday is going to look rather different this year. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you about what are some of the differences we might see if we follow along with one of our live stream masses, and how can we best follow along with what's going on. Um, so the first thing is, unfortunately, even though we have all the palms sitting in the fridge in the basement of the church, uh, we won't be able to distribute them this year. I was really hoping that we could still find some way to distribute palms in a kind of socially distanced uh, manner, um, but it turns out it's really just not possible because even if we set them all out and we do some kind of drive-through, it's still a real kind of, you know, um, touch point for infection that we could still uh, inadvertently pass to each other. So we're going to have to uh, forego the distribution of palms this year. Hopefully they'll stay fresh down in the fridge and we can uh, still find a way to distribute them at some other point. Um, so uh, what we want to suggest to you this year is maybe you've got some bushes or you know other kind of uh, plants around your house that you could press into service and still uh, use in your own homes. So, you know, maybe you've got some kind of evergreen branch bushes out front like I do or something like that. Um, it's actually kind of appropriate because in many parts of the world they just use whatever branches they have around. In fact, like if you go to Rome, um, you'll see elaborately woven palms that the, the priests are carrying, but uh, what most people have are olive branches because olive trees are extremely common in the Mediterranean. And think too, you know, for most of human history, uh, it wasn't possible to ship palms from palm growing lands to, you know, the United States or, you know, Northern Europe or, you know, places where we can't grow palm trees. Uh, so, you know, people have been doing this for centuries. Um, and I actually think it's really appropriate and can be really meaningful for us. Um, and to explain why, I'm going to need to delve a little bit into liturgical history. So uh, put your Catholic nerd hats on. It's my Catholic nerd hat. I haven't been promoted to the Monsignor, it's just my academic attire. And we can delve a little bit into uh, liturgical history here. So for centuries and centuries and centuries, until 1955, the way palms were blessed on Palm Sunday was in this extremely elaborate ceremony that looked a lot like a mass. And it would take place at another church, um, and then there would be a procession, a much longer procession from one church to another church. Usually, you know, we're talking about like the, the bishop's procession to the cathedral or something like that, because there usually should be one procession per city and everybody would do it together. So uh, liturgical scholars kind of debate about, well, did this start with actually a mass and then it got stripped down just into the blessing of palms or did it just get kind of built up into the style of mass? We're not really sure. We just know that this is how it was done for centuries. So it started with an entrance antiphon like we have at mass. There was a first reading from uh, the book of Exodus where uh, the people of Israel take shelter at a grove of palm trees, okay? And uh, then there's a gradual psalm, kind of the old equivalent of a responsorial psalm. Uh, and, and then the gospel, that of course is still there uh, in the ceremony that we have today. And then there was one preliminary blessing prayer and then a preface, like at Mass, the prayer that the priest uh, says or sings right before we sing the Sanctus, the Holy, Holy, Holy. And if we look at that prayer, again, that was used in century, in use for centuries in the Roman church, um, we can see it has this text. It is very right, meet and just, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, how they always begin. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, whose glory is in the wisdom of thy saints, for to thee thy creatures render service, acknowledging thee as their sole origin and their God, and the entire fabric of the universe joins in praising thee, and thy saints bless thee, for they boldly proclaim that great name of thy only begotten Son before the kings and powers of this age. Around him stand angels and archangels, etc., 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 like the prefaces normally conclude. Uh, then that preface followed by not one, but six prayers of blessings over the palms. You think, well, that's a bit excessive, right? Like, do you really need to bless them six times? Well, look back to what that text said in the, in the preface prayer. Thy creatures render service, acknowledging thee as their sole origin and their God. And we think of six, we should think of the six days of creation. So when we, you know, use palm branches or, you know, okay, I'm going to take my funny hat off, um, you know, whatever kind of branches we have around, this isn't just to give us some kind of souvenir to take home. We are using God's creation to praise him, right? And so we are redirecting 
God's creation, the six day, six prayers of blessing, six days, the entirety of creation, we are directing it back to him. Right? So it's not just a souvenir to take home. It's using God's creation to praise him and directing all that God has made back to him, its source and its origin. Right? And this is how we live our baptismal priesthood, the fact that we are all priests by our baptism, right? the common baptismal priesthood of the faithful. We live this out by directing God's creation back to him like Adam did in the Garden of Eden when he gave names to everything. Right? So this is really neat because you know, what's the real grace of this moment that we're experiencing in the midst of this pandemic is, I believe, living the domestic church, right? Turning our homes and our families into what they really should be, domestic churches where God is praised and glorified and honored through the life of our family. So when we take, you know, whatever branches we happen to have sitting around and use them uh, to, you know, uh, to the great praise and glory of Almighty God through use of the sacred liturgy and whatever way we're able to participate in it, we do just that. We give God's creation back to him. Uh, so now I want to share with you just uh, some more practical things about uh, how we can follow along with this Sunday's live stream mass. So I'm going to, uh, I'm on the Zoom machine here, so I'm going to share uh, this with you. So here we go. Oops, someone sent me a message, sorry. Okay, um, so if you um, pull up our parish Facebook page here, um, then you can see pinned to the top, that it's gonna look a bit different for you. I've got the administrator view here, okay? So top of the page, you're gonna see the first post, I've got it pinned up there, um, uh, tips for following on with math. So first thing is there's a worship aid right here that you can open up and follow along with. There's a link right here for a printable version of that. Right here is a great article written by our diocesan director of uh, the Office of Worship. And he's got um, great tips here for all of Holy Week for how you can actively participate from afar together as a family. So I encourage you to check that out. And of course it starts with um, Palm Sunday here. Sorry, we're a little slow to load today, okay. So check that out. Then, um, lastly, you press see more. You can also see a link to the readings. Uh, now there's some of the readings are in the, the worship page from the parish here too, but we don't have the gospel there because it's super long and it's, it's designed to be able to print uh, front and back. Um, so if you pull up this link to Magnificat, Magnificat is sharing a lot of resources free right now. So I encourage you to check out their website. Um, so here we've got, uh, Whole Liturgy of the Word uh, for uh, Palm Sunday tomorrow, uh, including the Gospel and the Passion, okay? So you can follow along here and you'll look for the C's on the left, and those are the, the crowd parts that we're used to doing together in church, and we follow along with um, follow along with our missile. So you can see there, so that's your first crowd part, so you can do that together as a family. So I encourage you to check out those resources. Thanks for watching. Hope you, um, there we go. Hope you under, uh, understand a little bit more about what's going on tomorrow for Palm Sunday. Hope this helps you to participate in a better way and to continue making your homes and your families true to message churches. Thank you. God bless you.